Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Take your calls on whether you agree with me in agreeing with President Obama about this drone policy. I actually find myself in the odd place of uh, being in agreement with what President Obama is doing. You're an American citizen. You put on a Nazi uniform to use the parallel. You get in a Nazi tank. We're taking you out. And I believe our commander in chief has the right to do that. Your, your U.S. citizenship, you're on a foreign field of battle. You're trying to take us out. You have no protection based on your citizenship. Now, if it's on American soil, that is a completely different deal. And we saw that this kid, this 19-year-old kid, wanted to blow up 25,000 people lighting a Christmas tree in Portland and care. Instead of saying, this is horrendous what this kid did. This is terrible. We are the religion of peace. This is not what Islam stands for. Instead, they are complaining about this prosecution. Said, look, you prosecute people for doing it. It is going to alienate the Muslim Community, So they're siding with the 19-year-old Muslim that wanted to blow up 25,000 infidels in downtown uh, Portland. So that lets you know where the Muslim community, the leadership of the Muslim community stands in the United States of America. They are criticizing, they are criticizing the prosecution of a Muslim who tried to blow up 25,000 infidels on American uh, soil. And by the way, the Supreme Court in Egypt upheld the death penalty for the folks that made that Muslim film that they claim set off the uh, Libyan thing. We now know that's true. Remember, Hillary Clinton said, we're going to have that person who ever made that. We're going to have him arrested and prosecuted. And he was. He's in prison today. He's the only one that's in prison. The people that did the Benghazi thing, they're running around loose. Tunisia had one in custody. Let him go. One of the other guys, the mastermind, he's sipping my ties on the lobby out on the patio of some luxury hotel in Benghazi right after the thing happened. Everybody knew he was there. Everybody knew he was the mastermind. Nobody even touched him. Uh, so the only guy that's behind bars is the guy that made the movie that turned out had nothing to do uh, with what happened. And Cairo Supreme Court upheld the death penalty, death sentences, for the seven Egyptian citizens that were involved in making that movie. There is no freedom of speech. There is no freedom of religion under Islam. All right, let's go to the phones, 888 let us go to David Columbus, Ohio. David, you're on Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Well, Brian, as a former pilot, I've seen too many near misses between aircraft. I can't imagine flying up there with a drone with someone, you know, flying it from, you know, hundreds of miles away or thousands of miles away. You know, bird strikes bring down passenger jets. Can you imagine how much faster a drone strike would bring down an aircraft? It takes a lot of vigilance to keep aircraft from uh, you know, uh, collisions. We need humans to keep them apart. If two uh, passenger jet aircrafts are on a head-on collision course a mile apart, it's too late. They'll, they'll, they'll both be destroyed. Now, and, I'm, I'm trying to get at your point here with the use of drones. I'm not sure I understand the, the, the point that you're trying to make with the use of drones. Well, uh, you know, uh, Brian, I, I think uh, drones flying without someone in the cockpit, I, I think it's very dangerous to the other aircraft up there. Well, but, I, I, but you know, the, David, they're in a place where there's no other aircraft. I mean, these are people out there in Bedouin tents somewhere. I, I, I don't see that. Well, I'm talking about over American uh, soil. Oh, yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm not for that. And you got cities now, by the way, um, some city in Virginia, forget the name of it, Charleston City or something like that, Charlottesville, uh, Virginia. They just passed a, an ordinance, the first one in the country, saying no drones over our city, and I think city after city needs to do that. That's a horrible invasion of our Fourth Amendment rights to have the police using these drones that are surveilling uh, their own citizens. But you don't. But I, but do you have an objection, David? If we use drones, which which do not risk an American life, I mean, this is remotely piloted, and so you don't have an American pilot up there that could be shot out of the sky with a surface-to-air uh, missile. Do you have a problem with using drones to take out our enemies overseas on the field of battle? No, I do not, and I think it'll save a lot of lives and be. Like very cost effective. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm with you on having drones over American soil. I thought we were talking about drones on the field of battle, and I, I agree with you with drones on American soil. Thanks, David. I appreciate the call. Let's go to Lee in Plano, Texas. Lee, you're on Focal Point. How you doing? What's on your mind? Uh, doing well, thank you. Um, I wanted to let you know about something that I just found out about concerning um, gun control. Okay. What's that? I was shocked, and I, I, I'm delighted. Uh, it's called it, it's called the Dick Act of 1902 that can't be repealed. It says, in other words, it's written into the Second Amendment to protect the Second Amendment from um, from being repealed, and uh, it says uh, protection against tyrannical government. 
and um, oh gosh, I've got about three pages here that I could email to you, but just to try to yeah summarize it as it, briefly it says, as succinctly as you can. Yes, uh, it says cannot be repealed, forbidden. The Trump Act enacted by the Congress further asserting the Second Amendment as untouchable. The Dick Act of 1902, also known as the Efficiency of, Mil- of Militia Bill, H.R. 11654 of June the 28th, 1902, invalidates all so-called gun control laws. Well, you know, it's interesting, Lee, and I, I appreciate you bringing that to our attention. I would be happy to see it. If you can email it to me, you can send, uh, we monitor focalpointedafr.net, focalpointedafr.net, email it to the link to us there, and uh, the, the team will get it to me. Uh, but you know what? That's what, what's interesting to me, Lee, about that is that goes clear back to 1902. That's 111 years ago, 112 years ago, or 111 years ago. And that indicates how how long the Second Amendment has been under attack. Now, that for them to say that this law cannot be repealed, that's not true. I mean, a subsequent Congress can repeal any law. The only thing that can't be repealed by Congress is the Constitution, and the Second Amendment, I believe, provides all the protection for our right to keep and bear arms. But it's indication to me that even back in 1902, Second Amendment was under attack, and the Congress of that day felt the need uh, to shore it up. Well, thanks for the call, Lee. I appreciate that. Let's go to Chris Effingham, Illinois. Chris, you're on Focal Point. What's on your mind? Talk to me. Hey, Brian. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Hey, I want to first tell you uh, I appreciate your show, and I also appreciate uh, your post on Facebook and Twitter. Um, it's been a, a, a very uh, good source for me to be able to stay informed and to be able to um, to help out on things like with the Boy Scouts. Great. Um, but I did want to talk about the uh, about the use of drones. Um, I find myself in the same odd place as you do um, in agreeing with President Obama, which I, doesn't happen very often. Um, however, um, I, I hope we don't, um, as a country, we don't come to rely on drones exclusively um, because there are some, some high-value targets out there that could give, provide us a lot of information. And just sending a drone, we're obviously not going to get that. Um, so I, I, I definitely, um, I definitely support it. Um, I just want to make sure that um, it, it doesn't become something that we rely on totally and yeah. take the human factor out um, so that we can't go in and capture some of these people that we um, we need for information. Yeah, well, and I agree with you, and there's no substitute for human intelligence, for boots on the ground. There's no substitute at times for actually sending in uh, forces, uh, whether it's Delta Force or SEAL teams. I mean, going in and getting bin Laden. We actually saved uh, lives by just taking out bin Laden you know, his family was spared. The other civilians in the household were spared. And so there's no question that there is a place for that kind of thing. And that's always, I guess, the hazard, you know, if you rely too much on mechanical devices and remotely controlled devices. I mean, there's going to be an element that, that's going to be missing that cannot be replaced when you've got actually eyes on the ground, boots on the ground in place. And so uh, I, I, th- I think you're right, Chris. That would certainly be a concern. We don't want to get overly dependent uh, on these robotic uh, devices. All right, Chris, appreciate the call. Thank you for that good word. Let's go to John, Macon, Georgia. John, you're on Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? I just wanted to call about the drone strikes and how the uh, expansion of the executive power come about and mostly came under Addington. It was hated during the, in the CIA when he was chief counsel there, and he's uh, buddies with Dick Cheney and uh, the one guy, uh, Bolton, that has come out, which all the other conservatives seem to be jumping on board with. And, uh, of course, Carl Rove's got his new super PAC to eliminate uh, true Tea Party conservatives. Well, I'm a true Tea Party conservative. And I'll tell you this. During the NDAA Act, which the true Tea Party is against and wants to see repealed, the United States of America has been deemed a battlefield, which allows, with this drone strike, because it has not been decodified, that those things should be used in foreign wars and not on American soil. It targets all those who are Christians, believe in God, cling to their guns, and the Constitution. That's what this is about. It's expanding power to attack our own people inside our own country. And it's sad. And you don't even know what the Dick Act is, which really bothers me because of the fact it's been on the Internet and I've known about it for a long time. Which Why are you so far out of the loop and uneducated on all these issues? Well, you know, I don't need to know about the Dick Act because I'm familiar with the language of the Second Amendment. Reality is we don't need the Dick Act. All we need is the Second Amendment properly understood and uh, applied. Now, I'm happy to get familiar with the Dick Act. I'm always looking to educate myself, and I will be happy to take a look at it. Now, the, the, I want to get back to the drone thing just for a second, though, uh, with you, John. Now, are you saying there's language in this memo? Because the language I read in the memo had to do with American citizens on foreign soil 
that are helping Al Qaeda. I mean, that's the restriction of the uh, of the memo. Now, I'm completely sympathetic to your concern that we've got a president who would abuse that, who would transgress the boundaries that are set up in this memo. I have no problem agreeing with you that that's a valid concern. But are you saying there's something about the language in the memo itself that allows for that? Exactly. Well, what's the language there, that allows it, for that? The fact is, it's so vague, it doesn't, de- it doesn't define exactly where those drones are going to be used. Those drones should not be used within the United States of America. Fourteen states are taking action right now to eliminate the use of drones within their territorial states. Well, I agree One with you. I, I agree with you on that, John. Uh, I'm not sure that the language in this memo would provide for that. I'm not saying that President Obama wouldn't try to stretch the language and do that, but the language itself I don't think permits that. It's got to be somebody overseas working to help al-Qaeda. And it's sad that you would be on here defending it, taking the side of John Bolton and Dick Cheney and David Addington, that crooked lawyer up there in Washington, D.C., that nobody likes. Well, now let me ask you this question, John. Are you... Are you, do you support the use of drones on the foreign field of battle to take out al-Qaeda? Do you support that? If it's outside of this country, I don't have a problem with it. Okay, well, that, that's where we agree then, John. We, we agree. We're in agreement that that's okay. And we're in agreement that we shouldn't have that happen on American soil. And the issue is whether Barack Obama is going to take advantage of some vague wording in this, uh, in this memo uh, to try to use drones against American citizens. And I agree with you, John. It's not beyond the realm of possibility that he would do something like that, and you and I would stand in fierce, fierce opposition to that. No drones on American soil. All right, John. Well, listen, I hope we found some kind of place of agreement to come to uh, there on that. Appreciate the call, John. Thank you for that. This is the Focal Point AFR Talk. We'll take more calls on the drone thing, 888 589 also want to talk a little bit about the immigration issue when we come back uh, out of the break. So we'll take some calls on what's going on with uh, immigration. If you've got some concerns there, uh, you know, I certainly do with regard to what's happening. I'll bring you a little bit of information about uh, immigration over the last 10 years. that ought to be a concern and help kind of clear up some of the confusion that exists, I think, on the uh, immigration issue. This is the Focal Point uh, AFR Talk. We will be right back after these brief messages. Don't go anywhere.